The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Greetings, my name is Rob Altamont, VP of Marketing for Herico Golf, and I'll be your moderator for today's Herico webinar entitled The Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index in 2009 Shaft Addendum. The webinar will be taught by our technical director, Jeff Summit. Jeff and I have been collectively in the golf business for almost 40 years. He has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984, and more importantly, has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the Modern Guide to Shaft Fitting book. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts in the Modern Guide to Club Making, which is the golf industry's go-to textbook for modern club assembly. Both books are available for sale online at herricogolf.com or by calling 800-367-8912. Let me get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Number one, the audio settings for today's webinar is set to listen only, which means we cannot hear you, but you can only hear us. So don't worry about coughing or phones ringing in the background because no one can hear it. If you look at, the, at your GoToWebinar dashboard located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the words chat and question. If you expand this box, you'll see empty space for you to type any questions or problems you may have throughout the webinar. Because we have limited time, we are saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. Feel free to type any questions you may have, and I'll make sure time providing that we'll get to them at the end. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded, and you'll be sent an email with a link to the MP3 and slideshow of the complete webinar. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Rico Golf's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Take it away, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Let's get started here. Okay, how important is shaft fitting? Let's go back 100 years uh, prior uh, to a quote from James Braid in the book Advanced Golf. This question of the selection of shaft is really one of enormous importance, for it is infinitely easier to get a head to suit you exactly than it is to get a perfect shaft. Remember, 100 years ago, heads were handmade from wood, each having a slightly different density and grain structure. Therefore, no two were exactly alike. Today, club heads are precision made with very narrow tolerances. Plus, we fully understand each club head specification in great detail. 100 years ago, shafts were made out of wood, too. Although early experiments um, using steel began at this time, uh, they weren't available on a commercial basis for another quarter century. Wooden shafts were very inconsistent and they were susceptible to warping and weight change, something luckily we don't have to worry about today. But even with the advancement in shaft manufacturing, it's still extremely difficult to duplicate a shaft. More importantly, determining what shaft you need is still a major stumbling block. Why? Well, because we fully don't understand what each shaft specification does the same as we do club head specifications. Let's take a look at the role of the shaft. The shaft is definitely more than just a thing to connect the head to a shaft. Imagine if we had no shaft at all. Use your imagination for a second. Let's say we had a Nintendo Wii, or better yet, we had an electromagnet in the grip to keep the club head a constant distance from your hands. We swing the club and hit the ball, and what happens? The ball might very well fly as it should. But at impact, we wouldn't have the feel or the feedback. So the shaft acts as a transmission device. Thou shall not break. It sounds simple, but the shaft needs to withstand the rigors of everyday play to fit a variety of club heads on the market, as well as golfers who possess very high club head uh, speeds. Next, the shaft needs to provide both feel and control. Years ago, ping irons were available only with very, very stiff shafts because their philosophy was all about control, regardless of the player's strength. On the opposite extreme, you had the very flexible fiber speed shafts. If you remember the infomercials, they guaranteed more distance. These shafts had great feel, 
but the ball would end up, where the ball would end up was a completely different story. Therefore, there has to be a compromise when it comes to shaft stiffness. The shaft needs to have the right amount of weight. Too light, and you end up playing Zorro golf, or just waving the golf club, and have no idea where the ball's going to go. Too heavy, and it's too difficult to swing efficiently. So there's a balance there. Lastly, the shaft should have some latitude to change the trajectory through the stiffness distribution of the shaft, which we'll touch on later, or the balance point of the shaft. But those are the key roles of uh, the shaft. Okay. For years, shaft fitting was, I guess it still is, based on swing speed and distance. There's five traditional flexes. Uh, the L-flex, which is short for ladies, was designed in the uh, traditional fitting sense for swing speeds up to 60 miles an hour. The A-flex, or senior, or where the A-flex gets its name is called amateur flex, was designed for golfers between 60 and 75 miles an hour. R-flex, regular, for 75 to 90. S-flex, or stiff, for 90 to 100 mile, or 110 miles an hour, and X-flex, which is extra stiff, was designed for those who had uh, club head speeds above 110 miles an hour. Those were the traditional fitting um, parameters. But the assumption was that shaft flexes are all standardized. There's two different methods of measuring shaft flex. The oldest is by deflection. And there's a, a device called a deflection board. Um, and the picture on the left is an illustration of one. You can't see the end of the, the shaft, but it's um, fixed in a collet device where it just holds the butt end in place. And then a weight is hung from the tip of the shaft. There's also electronic uh, deflection boards that um, have load sensors in the tip to uh, determine how much uh, the force it takes to uh, deflect the, the shaft a certain distance. But in this case, the more the shaft deflects, the more flexible it is. Most deflection boards are designed for raw or cut shafts, but you can also put assembled clubs on them. Another method of measuring the, the stiffness is through a device called frequency analyzer. Now, frequency is a dynamic measurement of the shaft stiffness. The bottom picture is that of a, a frequency analyzer. And let's see if 